Hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Lum Garden. Okay, so I'm going to be putting some seeds in today. Now I'm a little bit behind with, with one thing and another, but basically what I'm going to be putting in is some tomatoes. I'm going to be putting in Gardener's Delight, which is from Wilco's, and some Golden Sunrise, which is what I put in last year, just a few of those. And then um, Money Maker's the main one. Um, this is from Deary. Um, that's the uh, that's the go-to tomato plant for me. And then also Alicante. These two are very close in variety, but what I typically do is do a few of each of those. And so those are the tomatoes. From a brassica point of view, I'm going to be putting in um, some cabbage. This is from Johnson's um, Savoy. Um, then I'm going to be putting in some um, Calabrese F1 Hybrid um, and some of these as well, Iron Man F1. Um, I'm also going to be putting in some kale, which is seeds that I've saved myself. Um, and then onions. These should have gone in a couple of months ago, really, but uh, I'm going to be putting some. Um, Burnswick red onions, I'm going to be putting some leeks in um, and I'm also going to be putting some Alice Craig um, onions in as well. Now I've also got sets as you can see here, these are the onion sets that I've managed to get. Um, so I've got two bags of these as well. So those will be going in as well as the uh, the seeds. So the seeds are going to be a little bit behind but uh, it is what it is. Um, then from a gourd point of view I've got um, butternut squash from, from Deary. Um, I've got some um, Big Max pumpkins from Wilco's, uh, and I've also got some um, Calabrese, sorry, some some um, courgette um, from Johnson's as well. And then uh, we'll put some herbs in. So I've got some sweet basil to put in uh, from Deary, and I've also got some coriander. Uh, that's some more basil, but basically I'll be putting one lot of basil in um, today as well. And then some flowers. I've got some. Uh, giant single sunflowers um, from Wilco's. I've got some um, some more sort of variety from um, sunflowers from Deary and then I've got some um, verbena, um, a very pale um, a verbena flower to put in as well. So to start off with I'm going to put the uh, the brassicas in now. I don't need too many of the kale so I, I typically grow about, um, these are seeds I saved myself uh, last year as you can see. Those are the seeds in the bottom there. Now, now these seeds, if I keep these inside the house, these seeds will keep for sort of, I don't know, five, five six years. Uh, now I only need um, probably about uh, a dozen of these plants, but what I'm going to do is put in around 30. So I'm, I'm just going to put it in this, uh, this small uh, seed tray here. And all I'm going to do is basically lightly um, sprinkle the, the seed. I know you can't really see this but they're, they're going in about an inch apart. Uh, now if I put four rows of five in that's 20 plants so that'll give me some spares. What you find with brassicas is you can get some plants that don't sort of form quite normally and because these seeds aren't shot bought I'm not expecting the germination rate to be absolutely 100% so it's always worthwhile putting a few more in. Uh, the reason you put them an inch apart is so it's easy to separate them. Now, as soon as these have grown, um, these all sort of get to about two inches high. As soon as they got to two inches high, I'll, I'll be separating them out and putting them into pots and then um, sort of growing them on from there. And then you grow them in the pots, um, sort of a pot like this. Um, you grow them in those pots till they're about, I don't know, about six inches or so high. As soon as they're six inches high, then you can plant them out into the garden. So these will be going out into the garden probably in about um, about three to four weeks time. So all I'm going to do is put a very, very light sprinkle of compost on top of those. Like that, I've literally just put a very light amount in then. What's important with brassicas, or with any seeds really, is that they're in contact with the, um, the compost so that the seed keeps moist. But with brassicas like the soil, 
to be quite compacted. Um, so you know, make sure that that's nice and tight. So that's the kale. Um, so I'll just put this over here, and they'll, they'll get a good soaking um, in uh, with with clean tap water. What I is what I recommend, and then from there use rainwater. And the reason I suggest that is. There's, there's pros and cons both ways. With 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 rainwater, you know, there is potential of some bacteria in there, um, and with the seeds, it's best to um, you know keep it bacteria free if you can. And with tap water, there's also chlorine and, and fluoride in there, which which is also isn't good for the seeds. So what I typically do is just water them with tap water to start with. As soon as they've germinated, um, then I um, you know water them with rainwater. Right, next one to go in is cabbage. Now I don't need many of these at all. I'm only going to grow about half a dozen cabbage plants. Um, so I've got an even smaller tray for these. Uh, I'm trying to conserve the amount of compost I'm using this year because I don't really want to go to the shop and get any more. And these are I've got three bags left from last year, so I'm going to try and use that. Right, so these seeds are going to be exactly the same. All brassicas are for all these like small. Um, dark um, spheres. Right, so I'm, I'm only going to put in probably about a dozen or so seeds in there, trying to keep them about an inch apart. Unless I'll put more than a dozen in there, a couple more for good luck. Right, and I'll, I'll keep these seeds, these are good till 2023, so I'll have those for next year. So I've got about, I don't know, 20 25 seeds gone in there now. Um, and I expect most of those to germinate. Again, in exactly the same way, um, just a little bit of compost on the top of those. Like that, and just firm it down. Obviously I can't get any bit of wood in here, so just firm it down with my hand. Again, I'll give these a bit of tap water in a moment, and then that will get them started. Right, so that's cabbage. Right, now in exactly the same way, um, I'm not going to do the um, Calabrese, now I always grow lots of these so what I've got is a full tray um, and just to make it easier what I'm going to do is firm the ground first with my piece of wood just to give me a level surface, right so these, I have actually bought some seeds but I've been brutally honest with you I can't find them so um, these are seeds that are they were actually out of date last year, um, so these are December 19. So I'm um, fingers crossed these will germinate. Uh, there's no guarantees with these, but uh, again, I don't really want to go to the shop, so I'll see what see what happens with these first. Right, so these are the um, Fiesta F1 hybrid. Um, there should be quite a few seeds in here. Again, these are going to be the yeah, there's not that many seeds. So that's the that's the seeds again, little little dark brown black spheres. And I'm going to try and place these uh, about an inch apart in the compost. Like that. Try your best not to get two seeds together because you can almost guarantee they'll both germinate. So then you've got two plants which are together, which are going to be very difficult to um, separate afterwards. So if you can keep them separated, it's always better for later on when you're pricking them out. It just makes it easier. So as long as you get them sort of something like an inch apart, like that, as you see, you can do it reasonably quickly. Just pressing them in slightly with my fingers, I go. That's few. Right, so they're nicely spread out in there now. So hopefully, most of them will germinate, even though the seeds are out of date. Um, so I'm just sprinkling a very light amount of compost over the top of those, just to cover them really, that's all you need to do with brassicas, they don't need to be too deep. Okay, and then again, just firm those down, like this. 
and then that's the all of the brassicas in basically so it's as quick as that so literally within five minutes they're all in right so that's all the brassicas in so the next one I'm going to move on to is um, the onions let's get these seeds out of the way Right, so as I say, you know, the onions I'm going to put, I've got two bags of sets here, so there should be around 300 or so um, onions in there. So they're going to go in the ground in the next couple of days. But what I want to do is get the sets started. So I've got, um, I've got these red um, onions. Now, what I'm going to do is, you need to sort of plant these reasonably, reasonably close together and what you do is basically wait till they're about so it, it, it's going to end up looking a bit like grass to be honest with you so the um, it'll it'll grow up and when when they get to about sort of three four inches high off the pot you can then basically get them out and then pull them out and then just basically just dip them in the ground um, in a week or so well in a few weeks time right so I'm just gonna to level that off a little bit more. So this is just a standard um, seed tray. Now in here we should have, uh, it says so March to April, so I'm not too far in it really. There's 350 seeds in one packet, so I'd imagine that will basically do me this year. Go. Oh. I was expecting a little thing in there, but there wasn't. Well caught though. Right, so that's what the seeds look like. Not little teeny pieces of, not little teeny pieces of coal. Now, obviously you're not you're going to get these reasonably close together. So all I'm going to do is basically sprinkle them over the top of the soil, like that. And I'm going to put all of the seeds in this tray. Now, normally I'd probably spread these across two trays, but because I'm trying to conserve the amount of compost I'm using, I'm going to put them all in here. Um, because I'm going to be pricking them out when they're not too old anyway. So they're not going to get too big. I'm basically just going to germinate them in here and get them started and then I can put them straight into the ground. So what I'd normally do is, as I say, I'd normally spread these across two trays. In fact, I think what I'll probably do, I think there's enough in there. I don't want to put too many because I've still got a few here. What I'm going to do is use this half tray as well. Obviously when you do it you can take a bit more time on it than I have. Try and get them as spread out as you possibly can. Now, just a little bit of compost over the top. Again not too much, there's only, by the time this is compacted down it's going to be probably a quarter of an inch or so, you know, three or four millimetres of compost. Now these will need a good soak in because um, the seeds are quite seeds are quite dry and with the brass you need to give them a good soaking so that you soften the seeds so it starts to germinate um, and then obviously keep them well watered and warm for the for the first week or so right okay so again I'm going to firm these down but nowhere near as much as I would I'm basically just going to lightly basically what you want to do is just make sure that the the compost is in contact with the seed but you don't, unlike brassicas, they don't particularly like this ground to be too, too hard. Right, I'm going to label those up. So red, red onion, that's one. That's the second one. Right, okay, so as I say, I'll give them a good watering. Um, there's no need for glass over them or anything like this with this weather that we're having at the moment. Um, just give them a good water and then leave them, they'll germinate off quite nicely. Right, so that's the onions. Right, now I have got some white onions as well. Um, these ones, I think what I'm going to do with the white onions is leave them because I've already got 300 white onions there, so I'll probably leave those till next year now. Um, so that's the onions. Now the leeks. Um, the way I like to do leeks is basically get a pot like this. Now leeks you need a good depth of pot, you can't do these in a, in a tray. What you need is a pot like this, reasonably deep. If you can get one deeper that's even better, but I'm using this one this year. Again, because I want to try and conserve the, the compost. I don't want to use too much compost. Right, 
so I've, I've filled the pot up to about there where the where the rim is. Right now, I don't want to put loads of leaks in. I just want to put in probably enough for half a row. Um, now you do these in exactly the same way as you do the uh, the onions. Basically, the seeds are going to be like little pieces of coal again, like that. Um, and what you do is you grow these till they're about sort of six inches high in the pot, and then knock the pot out, separate them, and then just bob them in the ground. Simple as that, and then just basically keep them keep them watered for the first couple of weeks, let them get themselves established, and then uh, then they'll grow away quite nicely. So that's just a sprinkle of compost on the top there, and then with another pot, just firm the top down, just like that. Leak. That's the leak's done. So, as you can see, you can do them reasonably quickly. Right, so that's all the, that's all the leaks done, or alliums, whatever you want to call them. Leaks and onions. Right, so, on to uh, the tomatoes. Now, I've got a tray here. Now, what I do with the tomatoes, it depends on how many you want to grow. Um, um, some of the tomatoes I only grow sort of three or four plants, so what I'm going to do is um, just put them into a pot. So, the Gardener's Delight, um, with the little small cherry tomatoes, I only grow about three or four plants of those. Um, and the, the Sunrise, uh, sorry, Golden Sunrise tomatoes, I only grow two or three plants of those as well. So what I'm going to do is put about five or six seeds into a small pot. Um, something like that will be, be more than sufficient. Um, and then till the till the plant gets to about um, about two or three inches high, and then basically all you need to do then is you can prick it out and then put it into a pot onto its in its own like that, and then you can plant it out into your either your grow bag or your greenhouse or whatever. So, but let's let's start with the money maker now. Money maker is the tomato that I strongly recommend. I've been growing um, money maker now for many years and it's never let me down. Um, it's, it's a very very hardy, very tasty tomato um, and I like it a lot and we make all sorts of things with it. It's, it's the good all round tomato, you know you can make everything from salads to um, you know you can boil them up and make yourself some uh, passata or, or whatever you want to do which is what I use a lot of mine. Um, I make a lot of sort of pasta dishes and chilli dishes and stuff like that and I've got at the end of the year I probably make about four or five gallon of passata which I then freeze in the freezer and that keeps us going all through the winter and you can't buy passata like your own um, and all I do basically is put the tomatoes in um, some boiled water um, some boiling water you know, to, to remove the, um, the skins from the tomato and then as soon as you've got the skins off the tomato, all you need to do then is basically roughly chop them, put them into a saucepan and then boil them for about, uh, it's probably going on for about an hour and a half I boil them for, and then they all break down. I'd give them a bit of a whiz up with the, with the liquidizer, whilst they're still in the saucepan, and then uh, just to help them along a little bit. And then I basically put it then into small boxes, put it in the freezer, um, so I get about a pint and a half or so in each box. And then when I'm cooking a pasta dish, all I do then is just get one of those out the night before um, and then basically mix that in with your pasta and it's uh, really good. Obviously there's other things you can do, you can you can mix some basil in with it as well, obviously tomato and basil go together really well. So what you can do is boil your tomatoes up and just at the last minute put some fresh basil in and then when you liquidise it, that'll all liquidise into it which gives you a nice flavour. Or um, you can... Uh, you can actually freeze the tomatoes whole and then you can sort of make the passata later if you don't have the time at that particular point in time so you can um, always do it later but it is better to make the passata as the fresh because I find once you've frozen them it's difficult to get the, the, the skins off because they, they tend to sort of disintegrate a bit when they've been frozen. Right so I'll put one seed every inch or so that looks quite a lot but what I'll do is I'm probably going to use about half of those plants um, but I know a lot of my friends are in the 70s and not able to get out at the moment so what I'm going to do is put a few spare ones in because these these seeds are only good until um, 
at the end of this year anyway. So what I'll do is I'll um, give them some of them seed, some of them plants when they when they grow. People always want some water plants, I find. Now, the thing with um, money maker is you can grow it indoors or outdoors. It grows best indoors, obviously, in, in, inside a greenhouse. But you can grow these on a windowsill, you know, when you're kitting windowsill, or you can grow them actually outside if you can, if you can find a reasonably sheltered but sunny spot. Um, they'll grow quite nicely there as well. Now again I've just put about a um, quarter of an inch of soil on the top of the or compost. Firm them down and then they'll grow really well, they'll be away quite quickly. So that's uh, money maker. So those are the tomatoes. Now what I'll do, the, the alicante is done in exactly the same way so there's no point me showing you that. So what I'll do is I'll just do um, the these two. So I've got so alicante is the same basically, plant it in exactly the same way. Um, the the other tomatoes obviously golden delight, which are the small cherry tomatoes, and then the uh, the golden sunrise. So what I'm going to do with these because I only want sort of half a dozen or so plants. I'm going to put these in these in these pots to try and conserve compost. Sure there's no lumps in there. So I'm going to fill these almost to the top. Right. A bit more in there. Okay, so first one to go in will be um, the golden sunrise. Now in here. Typically with these um, varieties you don't get too many seeds, I don't know how many's in there. There's actually quite a few. So I only want half a dozen or so seeds. So I think I've got about I've got about eight there. That's okay. I'm just going to sprinkle them in, try and get them as far apart as you possibly can. And I'll just show you these when once I've done it. So now you can't see from the camera. As you can see, I've, I've spread them out as much as I can. Um, again, all you need to do then is put a, a little bit of compost over the top and pat them down. So I'll just label them before I forget what they are. That's golden. Okay, and the the garden's delight. Again, just need a few of these. Now these are some that I have already grown. So I grew some of these last year, so that's why the seed packet's already open. If I can get in it. Right. Again, the seeds are the same. Obviously, these ones are slightly. See, it's a slightly smaller, but they're pretty much the same. Right, and again, just sprinkle those on the top. Try and get them as far apart as you can. Now, I'm only going to grow a couple of these, so there's plenty in there for me. Okay, and then again, I'll say these are small, sort of cherry tomatoes, which you can eat straight off the vine or have them as salad or whatever. I'll just use them as a garnish on a dish or something like that. And the, the yellow ones really more for interest than anything. Obviously they're garnished for barbecues and stuff like that. But the, these are pretty much, flavour wise, these are pretty much the same as Money Maker. There's not a lot of difference, it's just the colour really. So that's Gardener's Delight. Okay, so that's that done. Right. That's all the tomatoes done. Um, quick as that. So I'll just put that. Let's put that in there and I can put the seeds away for next year. The good thing about you know only growing what you need really is obviously these seeds, tomato seeds typically last until we can see these ones here there. Um, they're so by 2022. So you know that'll you know one pack of seeds, even though the you know the sort of um however much they are, two pounds or whatever. Uh, you know, a packet of seeds will last you three 
it one more years. Right. So uh, next one is um, what shall we do? Let's do the uh, butternut squashes next. Now with with butternut squashes, what I typically do is plant them straight into the straight into the pot. Now what you can do is put um, two seed in a pot and then pull out the the weakest one. Or what I typically do is um, put one seed in a pot and then keep a few seeds back and then if it's not germinated you'll see the rest of them germinating. If it doesn't germinate as quick as the others then just bob another seed in the same pot which is I think the most efficient way of doing this. Now all, um, all gourds have similar looking, similar looking um, um, seeds, they're all sort of like pumpkin seeds, I think everybody knows what they look like. And butternut squashes are no different, the seeds are slightly bigger um, I'll just show you them. So the seeds look like like that. So they're quite big, really. These are really good for children because uh, you know you can get hold of the seed quite. Uh, you know you can get hold of it quite easily. Now what you want to do with these is feel the seed, um, and you and, and you want to feel some thickness in the seed. If the seed feels quite flat, it's unlikely to germinate because the, the, sometimes you get a seed without a kernel. But if you, if you feel that there's some width to the seed, that's the one to go for. Now what I'm going to do is pinch the seed and then put it in sideways up like that so it's in the pot as you can see like that um, and plant it about an inch or so down and then put a little bit of compost on the top like that and then firm it in and I just need a little label in there And then all I'll do is repeat that again um, for all of the um, the pumpkins, the courgettes, um, and the rest of the button squashes. What I do is obviously put one seed in each pot, put all the pots together, and then you, you, you'll see them all germinating. The ones that don't germinate, um, save some seeds back, and then just put um, you know put another seed in the uh, the pot that hasn't germinated. If you know what I mean. Right, so I'll just quickly show you, so that's a butternut squash. I'll just quickly show you a um, pumpkin just so you can see the seed. Look, the seeds are identical, it's just bigger. So in exactly the same way, you just want to fill a pot like that with some compost. Um, now, if you, one tip I can give you is if you grow multiple gourds, um, if you only grow one type of gourd, um, then by all means save the seed from it. If you grow like butternut squashes and um, pumpkins and courgettes close together, if you save the seed from any of them, what you won't get a true pumpkin or a butternut squash or a courgette. You'll get some hybrid between the two because the insects will cross pollinate between, and what you'll get is like something like looks like half a pumpkin or half a butternut squash or half a courgette. You get some weird sort of hybrids between them. So always with gourds, what I recommend is always buy. Um, the seeds from a packet and then you know you're going to get something that's true to the plant. So that's what a pumpkin seed looks like. It's exactly the same as a butternut squash but bigger. Um, and then all you want to do is get the get your seed. It's all gone back in there. Right, so get your seed and again you know you want some width in it. If it feels like it's really thin then it's unlikely to germinate. And then basically you put that in sideways on like that. If you can see that, put the seeds sideways on, I find that's the best way to germinate them. And then a bit of compost over the top again, like that. Firm it down. Leave yourself about half an inch at the top so you can water them. You need to keep these really well watered. Because um, basically what you want to do is obviously, if, if you imagine all of these seeds have got hard shells. So, you know, the shells of these seeds are really hard. So what you want to do is water the plant, so what it'll do is it'll soften soften this outer um, casing of the seed and then that'll soften it enough so it'll crack and then it can germinate properly. So you need to keep them, don't let them dry out, keep them well, you know, well watered. Um, what I recommend is you water them at night as it's going dark and then um, and then what you can do then is, you know, water them every day. You don't need to give them lots of water, you know, you don't need to soak them, all you need to do is just keep them damp. Um, pumpkin. Like that, and all I'm going to basically now is repeat that. So I'll 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 grow probably 
um, six or seven pumpkin plants and I'll probably grow probably seven or eight butternut squash plants so what I'll do is I'll probably put um, probably put ten of those in and probably about seven or eight of those in um, which will be more than enough for me and then the rest of the seed I'll put them on one side and then uh, that'll you know they'll keep for next year obviously these seeds again you know they're good until 2022 so if you buy one packet in a packet that looks like there's ten or more seeds um, you know that'll you know you only need sort of I don't know six pumpkin plants so potentially one pack of seeds will do for two years so right so those are the pumpkins right and the and the button squashes the cores yet again exactly the same but the seeds are slightly smaller still so those are the gourds so I hope this episode was of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Old Garden. Mm -hmm.